When my beloved friend Giannis' dad came to us and said he wanted to do a wilderness moose hunt before he was too old and it was too late, we made a plan that would stretch the limits of what he thought was possible. When you want to see something unforgettable, this is where you look for it. It's just amazing, man. I'm Steven Ronella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. I'm flying into a mountain ridge top in the Alaska range for moose. My friend and colleague, the Latvian Eagle, also known as Giannis Putelis, is hunting with me, and so is his father, Giannis. Now, Papa Giannis has hunted whitetail deer in the Midwest for a lifetime, while always dreaming of a real wilderness experience with the world's largest member of the deer family, the Alaskan moose. This trip is tailored to meet his dream. This is an unusual setting to be chasing moose in. Like, you, you, everybody knows that postcard image of a moose, right, where he's in a pond, eating lily pads. We're way above the ponds, way above the lily pads, on a ridge top in, like, high country, right? Moose are down in these canyons. We're going to be up in this high country trying to draw bulls in up out of there. If it seems a little odd for moose, it's spot on for caribou. They use the ridge tops as migration corridors. And while the bulk of the herds have already passed through, there's a chance that Giannis might catch a straggler. But top priority for everyone is finding Papa Giannis a bull moose. What do you think? I think it's awesome, man. You like it? Yeah. Glad you're my son. <laughs> <laughs> In much of Alaska, you cannot hunt on the same day that you fly. So we take our time setting up a weatherproof camp for what will be a long stay in the mountains. In the morning, the first order of business is to get a better lay of the land and spend some time surveying the surrounding country to see what all's hanging around. But not before Papa Giannis conducts a little Latvian black magic on my shooting iron. This morning, for good luck, we're going to put a Latvian spell on your rifle. So just put it out in front. Real simple, a little rhyme. How do you have to do that? Anku dranku drilli dru, chetri pari pi um pu, amu dramu riter shamu u te brix. Now, what all does that do? It just puts it in motion in your mind. Oh, so it's nothing? No meaning at all. It's just that it comes from Latvian folklore, you know. Naturally, our eyes are drawn to the astounding swath of moose country that sits across the valley from us. It takes only a few minutes to find some moose over there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They're off limits due to distance, as we're looking to find a bull that Giannis's dad can get at without killing himself in the effort but at least we know the area has promise. They're fun to look at over there, but they're kind of just eye candy. We're probably not gonna shoot them over there. We're probably not gonna watch them walk across the drainage, come over here. I feel like more than likely there's just gonna be some bull that we can't see that'll hear us and he's just gonna come walking up. I can't see him. You know when you start a relationship with a woman? Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, it takes a while for you oh, yeah, to develop. Yeah. I hear you. So like, it's a communication thing. Do you see the highest point across us? Imagine that that's the center of a clock. You got it. 12 o'clock. Okay. Uh, no. A clock? Yeah. Okay. 12 hour orientation. The top of that highest point is the center of our clock. Okay. Now. No, not 12 noon. What's that? Like across here. When you say the center, you're talking like the not center. Not a digital watch. I know. I'm talking okay. about the center of, if you like, take a circle and this run. This is a watch. This is a clock. Yeah, 12 o'clock. Yeah. 6 o'clock. If I say the center of the clock, we're making the top of that mountain yeah. that. Do. Like the crosshair. I would call that the crosshair of the clock. 
I don't know why you'd call it that. Because that's what the way I was raised to believe. <laughs> that's the cross there. There's no cross. It's projecting out. I want to get you to the center of the clock. That's the difference. You guys are different generation. You're thinking digital. I'm thinking I'm not analog. thinking remotely digital. No? OK. OK, you show me your clock that has a crosshair on it. No, imaginary. We didn't save for real. All right, so go on. OK. That's the center of our clock. Just look at that slope. You see how when it pitches off to the left, where it hits kind of like a sand? There's a lot of country to look over, so I split off to set up another calling station up the valley. I want to go far enough that we won't necessarily be calling to exactly the same moose, but still close enough that Papa Giannis can get in here, and that packing the bull out won't take more than a couple days if we do get lucky and find one. I like the spot better because it's a little bit fewer blind spots. The moose rut is coming on. So the plan is to mimic the plaintive moans that cows make when they're in heat and try to get a bull all hot and bothered enough to come check out what's going on. And then you do that every half hour for a week. And hopefully you very gradually bring a bull your way. So it's not quite like calling the Hallards. I think uh, you should, you should since you're the moose hunter. Right. Now I'm a gear gear hunter, hunter. Right. You should let out the first call. Oh, the call. Yeah. Maybe embarrassing. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds pro. Okay. I had a good teacher. Moose have excellent hearing, and the bull's antlers serve as amplifiers to catch sound and direct it into their ears. But still, it seems impossible that an animal a couple of miles away would actually pick up the call, though it does happen all the time. Meanwhile, the other side of the valley taunts me. I know that going over there would only serve to spread around odor and spook game and that it wouldn't do any good for Papa Giannis anyway. But knowing there are bulls over there kills me. Oh, you're getting a little gray hair up there, son. I think your vision's going. <laughs> Let's hit it. The plan this morning starts out the same as yesterday. Split up, keep calling. But that plan takes a back seat once we realize that yesterday's calling sessions have already proven out. My little setup where I was calling is right across this gully on that, little, on that next, what appears to be the ridge from this perspective. And just below there, there's a bull. I can just see two paddles shred and brush down there. I'm not happy with my setup right now because there's a lot of ways that he could approach where I wouldn't be able to see him. I need to find a spot where I can see more. We found a second good sized bull across the river from us. The chances of him ever making over here are slim, but at least you know there's Lots of moose in the area, and even though we can't see below us, you just gotta believe that the same thing's going on below you, and eventually someone's gonna respond to the call. Come on, big boy. I can see him down there, his antlers just glistening in the sun. It's gonna be a warm day, I don't think he's gonna get up for a while. I'm gonna go tell Giannis' dad about him, see what he wants to do, see if he wants to come in and try to put a stalk on it. Like he could get in here, pretty accessible. It's not a death march. I had no way of knowing, but at that moment, Papa Giannis hardly needed me to go and find a bull for him. His calling had already, in his words, put things into motion. 
Below him, beyond the roll of the hill, magic was happening. Holy <laughs> All right, we'll give him plenty of time. And we're gonna let him come up as far as he wants. Oh, man. Okay. I can't see him. Oh, there he is. Come on, big guy. Come on. Keep coming. There we go. your son <laughs> just amazing man oh yeah holy moly nice very nice oh my gosh you don't realize how big they are they're huge that's uh, overwhelming yeah hey man <laughs> nice Sweet. anyway Nice. Lots of meat to go around for everybody. We haven't done the suffering part yet. <laughs> Holy cow. What do you think? This is better than the one I found. Fulfilled my manifestation. Dude, you fulfilled your manifestation. Man, that's great, man. That is great. Awesome, boy. With an animal this size, there's little chance of getting it into the perfect position before you start butchering. Instead, you just gotta work with whatever part happens to be facing up. It's a big job, and if you've got plenty of daylight and good weather, breaks are welcome. You know what's messing with me about this moose, man? It's just really is tearing me up. No. There was no suffering. There's no like wondering if you're gonna get one, being all miserable. This is ridiculous. That was the first thing I said when those gunshots went off this morning. <laughs> and you just got it a little early. It, a little too easy. I am happy for you, but. <laughs> but you're not, you wanted to see a little more. I'm a little bit sadistic where I wanted you to be like crying in your cot. <laughs> well, <laughs> he won't, I probably should. But I might have you all wrong. You might have such a clean life philosophy that even a week of rain wouldn't dampen your spirits. Probably would not. You're right. That's what I realized. Yeah. Yeah, being alive is good. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up, just check, make sure that's you're right, alive. man. It's a good day, man. <laughs> when you get to a certain age, that it's always good. You value every day more. Once I got to be where I doubled my age and realized that people die at that age, I live in fear of the passage of years. But then I see a lot of people who live a good life, like yourself, where you come out of that and come into a thing where I'm thankful to be here. I'm not at the thankful part. I'm just at the part of fear. And I think later, I hope to transition into a, I'm glad to be here. Not like, holy smokes, I'm gonna there's a, there is an end. I can live in the moment every day. So, and look at Giannis's beautiful children. Yeah, exactly, or my daughter's kids. Or live in the moment of like, right here and now. I intentionally walk a little slower because when you walk slower, you notice where you place your foot and you go, oh, I want to take a photograph of that and put it in here. And I enjoy that. I appreciate it, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, this is, this is it. This is how you can relax and find that true definition of oneself. Opens up your energy so you can start conjuring bull moose. There you go. Manifesting yeah. bull moose. Yeah. Or whatever else you want in your life. Oh, that's uncomfortable. Yeah. No. No. Ready? Yeah, do it too down. All right. Lavian gorilla. Yeah. Keep going. Did you ever pull the stocking on a lady? There you go. 
something else, but not stocking. A little fast one? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a load. There's still a lot of work left. Several trips back to camp, then deboning all the meat so it can be flown out. At the end of the day, Giannis outdoes himself by giving the moose heart some old world love, fixing up a traditional Latvian dish that resembles stroganoff. Good, Yanni. I got the recipe from my grandmother. Oh, really? Onion, bacon, a couple modifications. I think she'll be okay with the fact that I did noodles instead of potatoes and did ticker. They travel ground beef. Noodles travel easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, but had I omitted like, the bacon, she'd shake her head. She'd be like, no, you can't do that. And when my dad made this, he used to put peas and carrots in here. Yeah, I found out today that this was the only meal that he, my grandfather knew how to make. My dad knew how to fry stuff or make uh, soup, one kind of soup. Like deep fryer or pan fryer? No, he deep fry everything, man. We ate dozens of species of wild game out of a deep fryer. I'm still a deep frying maniac, man. I shoot my bull on top of this mountain, you might get to suffer yet a little bit. Why? Well, the pack job won't be easy. Uh, all right. It'll just fulfill Steve's manifestation. You know, I used to date a girl like that, and then I decided, and I have the ability to make choices. Let's go. We settle into what I figured this trip would be like. A lot of waiting and looking and waiting and looking. Giannis and his dad work the high ridge lines in hope of catching sight of a straggler caribou that might come rolling through. I settle into my calling station, which I've come to think of as the wind tunnel. Days pass. No caribou, no moose. No caribou, no moose. Looking forward to something like this. I was like, thinking, man, it's gonna be so cool. I have, you know, so long, well over a week, just to be in the mountains. And if a day doesn't work out, and, you know, it doesn't really matter. There's no pressure. If we lose days, the weather it doesn't matter. And then you get out, and uh, <laughs> you are not the kind of person that you think you're going to be. At least I'm not, man. I get out, and I do not like days that don't feel productive. I like the thought of them. I like looking back on them and remembering them. But when they happen, I'm not a good sport about it. It's something I to work on. As I get older, or anymore, not as I get older, but as I get old. Alaska certainly lives up to the advertisement. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed that I don't have your level of, uh, like, enthusiasm. And it's, you just can't, there's no way to recreate it. Once you come up to Alaska 10 times, you, you'll never have that same awe as you did the first time you're here. Normally, it's like a dad takes his kid hunting. I grew up in tandem with, with my brothers, my two brothers, Matt and Dan. There is no way that if we wanted to go hunting and fishing with him, that he would have said no. I didn't think anything of it at the time. You just take it for granted. But now I have three babies of my own. And I now know it's very difficult to go out and do stuff with three kids. My dad was always slowed down by us. And then we kind of got older and left. And we moved out west, Alaska, Montana. And he stayed in Michigan and just hunted fish by himself. 
the thing I keep thinking about is how envious I am of Giannis. Here he is in this inverted world, having the joy of being slowed down by your old man, the same way your old man was slowed down by you when you were a kid. It leaves me wishing that I had had the foresight to see some of that stuff. I spent a lot of time thinking about my father. After losing my father 14 years ago, I still think about all that. How much I think he would have enjoyed something like this after a lifetime of hunting and fishing in the Midwest. I, you know, this stuff blows mine. So when I see stuff like this, it, like it's, it comes to mind. But it's cool to see Giannis and his dad you know, out having a set of experiences like this. You can't help but see that and just imagine your own life, your children, your parents, this kind of continuity. Done right, I think that the out of doors can lead to a lot of revelations about our human experiences and the kind of entanglement we engage in with other people as we go through life. You know, when you come outdoors, you start to see things in a different way than you do when you're bogged down in your day-to-day -day BS. <laughs>